What happens if you failed math? It's simple math, and if you have kids, probably kindergarten level math will get you the equation that you need to determine your field burn. Equation? <laughs> <laughs>
So our fuel doesn't go directly from the storage tank to the engine. It goes from the storage tank to a supply tank. Uh, but the way that that fuel goes to the supply tank is completely gravity fed. If you can imagine, we have a fuel tank, this big empty vessel, and there's, and there's fuel in here. Most fuel tanks on the top of the tank have a tube that comes down and that tube is where fuel is drawn from the lower portions of the tank and they're drawn up that tube into the engine. And in Nordhaven, all the fuel is gravity fed, which means there's a fitting at the bottom of the tank and the fuel is uh, pulled directly from the very bottom of the tank. What's important about this, in most vessels that have a tube that enters in from the top, sediment and particulate in the fuel can settle at the bottom of the tank. And this usually isn't a concern if you're in flat, calm water. But where most people start to have issues with their boat is when they start to get into heavy seas. This particulate and this sludge at the bottom of the tank will mix with the rest of the fuel, be suspended in that fuel, and then will start to draw into that pickup tube. And that's when they're gonna start to notice problems. The nice thing about having the fuel pulled directly from the bottom of the tank is nothing ever has a chance to settle. Any of the contaminants that are in the fuel are actively being pulled down into that gravity tube and they're being filtered out as the fuel is being used and they go into a supply tank where we actually have an opportunity to bleed off or remove any of that sediment from the fuel. The next two tanks that we have are supply tanks. So one of those supply tanks is located right here um, in front of me. And this supply tank is used for feeding fuel to our main engine and feeding fuel to our generator. So the way that fuel gets to the supply tank is by opening up either one of the valves from our storage tanks. So again, that storage tank fuel gravity comes out of the bottom of our storage tank. And you can see there's two fittings on the top of our supply tank on the port and starboard side where that fuel enters into our supply tank. Our supply tank is a 40 gallon tank. All of the new fuel is delivered to the top of the tank. All of the fuel that is being utilized by the engine is actually drawn from about the center of the tank. The reason why the fuel that the engines are consuming is drawn from the center of the tank is this tank allows any contamination or water that's in the fuel to be able to separate so that that separated contamination or water can actually be drained off so that you never draw it into the engine so it doesn't have an opportunity to clog a filter. As you know, if you have a fuel spill um, or if you've ever been around a fuel dock at a marina and you've seen a fuel sheen, fuel floats on top of water. In this storage tank, at the very bottom of the tank, there's a valve that you can open up and you can actually drain off any water or you can drain off any contamination into a, a container where you collect it, where you can dispose of it properly. Any of the good fuel uh, is gonna be on the top half of the tank. So about halfway up the tank or a little bit further up the tank, there's actually a pickup fitting where the engine and the generator drop from. So this tank is very, very helpful in being able to separate any contamination to allow only fresh fuel to be delivered to our engine. Also, one thing that's nice about this tank, located at the bottom in that area where you would expect any water to accumulate, there's actually a water sensor. So if there's a high level of water uh, moisture in the tank, that sensor will set off an alarm up in the pilot house and we'll know that it's time to come down here and open up that drain valve at the bottom of the tank to try to relieve any of that water or debris that might be in the tank. Another aspect that we like about the design of having a separate supply tank is all of the returned fuel that's unutilized by the engine gets returned to the supply tank and not the storage tanks. In a diesel engine, the fuel pump pulls in more fuel than the engine uses and any of the unused fuel is returned on a, on a return line, but that fuel generally gets warm since it's circulated through the engine. All that warm fuel is returned to the supply tank and not the storage tanks. So that fuel is warm, it can be vaporized. If that fuel were to be returned to the storage tanks, that could also cause condensation or moisture to start occurring in our storage tanks. So we like having a nice closed loop supply tank where the warm fuel 
is being directed back to, and then the engine can go ahead and consume that fuel right away. So we're not having that warm return fuel heat up all of the stored fuel that's on our boat. So off to the port side of our storage tank, you'll notice that there's another sight gauge. The only difference with this sight gauge is you'll notice that the graduations are in very small increments. So each one of these uh, represents a tenth of a gallon. What this sight gauge is used for is determining what our fuel burn is. So let's say you were crossing uh, from California to Hawaii, the boat was full of fuel and you were making your passage and you wanted to know what your hourly fuel burn rate was so that you could calculate how many hours you had to go to make sure that you had enough fuel. Many modern vehicles these days, again, do that electronically for you. They'll tell you how much range you have until you're empty and how much fuel you're burning. But again, uh, as we all know, electronics can be faulty. They rely on calibration. So the best way uh, to determine your actual fuel burn is to, do, to simply do the math yourself. This sight gauge is the fuel that's in our supply tank that our engine is using. So if you wanted to know what the burn rate was on our boat, you would simply close off the valve that is on the, on the storage tank that's allowing new fuel to enter the supply tank. So basically you don't want to add any fuel to the supply tank. So you close off that valve and then you would start a stopwatch for say 10 minutes or so and you would watch the sight gauge and see how much fuel is consumed in that 10 minutes. You then take the value of the consumed fuel in 10 minutes, you can multiply it by six, and now you know how much fuel is burned per hour. So all of the calculation for fuel usage on our boat is a manual calculation using this sight gauge. So if you, what, what happens if you failed math? We have a complete fuel manifold, and we have a, a set of filters as well. The nice thing about the fuel manifold is it allows you the flexibility to route the fuel as you see fit given the circumstances. So for example, if we weren't using the boat for a while and we actually wanted to polish the fuel, what we could do is we could set up the manifold so that we can draw fuel from a tank, say the, the starboard storage tank, we can run it through a set of filtration and then deliver it right back to the tank. If we wanted to change the loading of our boat at all, we could actually move fuel from one tank to another, from the starboard tank to the port tank. The other thing the fuel manifold gives us the ability to do is clean fuel and deliver it up to a separate supply tank located in the back of our engine room, which is used to supply fuel to our wing engine. So this fuel manifold gives us the ability to move fuel anywhere in the boat that we want, from tank to tank, or from one tank back to the same tank, or from a storage tank to a supply tank. So the third aspect to our fuel system is filtration. Directly above the transfer manifold is all the various filters associated with our fuel system. For each engine, we have a primary and secondary filter. All the fuel is primarily filtered through a Raycor filter assembly and then mounted to each one of the various engines is a secondary fuel filter. For our main engine, we have a dual rate core assembly. Fuel that's pulled from the supply tank, the day tank that's supplying fuel to the main engine, will go through one of these filter assemblies. The nice part about having a dual filter assembly is if you were to clog a filter, in lieu of changing it, you can quickly switch a valve around and now start to draw fuel out of a, another filter that's already changed and ready to go. Also, on this dual filter assembly, we have a vacuum gauge. So the vacuum gauge is very helpful in diagnosing when the filter is starting to become clogged, so you know when it's necessary to change it. The next Raycor fuel filter that we have is our transfer filter. Anytime you're moving fuel around using the manifold, fuel will be pumped through this transfer filter. So this is very helpful for moving clean fuel up to the day supply tank for our wing engine. So that fuel will be filtered prior to getting to that supply tank. That's what this transfer filter is used for. Or anytime you wanna polish fuel, clean any of the fuel within a tank and deliver it right back to the same tank. That is also another scenario where the transfer filter is used. And then the fourth Raycor filter that we have it's smaller, you'll notice, in size. And this fuel filter is used for cleaning the fuel before it gets to our generator. So that concludes the tour of the fuel system aboard our Nordhaven. We we'll hope you agree that it's very well engineered and it's a very robust system 
suitable for a trawler capable of ocean crossings. Until next time, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell if you haven't already, so you'll be the first to watch our next video. And if you want to learn more about other systems on our boat, let us know at mvfreedomseattle.com or leave us a comment below and we'll do our best to share more soon. See you next time.